Hi everybody, Hannah Storm back with Isaiah Thomas and Peter Vesey. We'll speak with them in just a few minutes. After the Knicks and the Heat, we will bring you another Game 5, the deciding game of the Sacramento-Utah series from Salt Lake City. The Kings are a remarkable turnaround story. Last season, in a full season, they were 27 and 55. This year, in a condensed schedule, they matched their win total, going 27 and 23. One of several new faces in Sacramento is rookie point guard Jason Williams. His flashy style has brought him plenty of attention this year. Here's his story. I always tell people, once I started playing ball, I always thought to myself that I could play at this level because, you know, if you, if you set high goals and, and you shoot for them, you, I think you have a better chance than saying in the back of your mind, well, I don't know if I can play in the league. So but I had no doubts about myself, you know, because I knew how hard I worked and how hard I wanted to get here. Jason's dream began in Bell, West Virginia, where he starred as a point guard for the DuPont Panthers, spending hour after hour in the gym thanks to his father, Terry, who had the keys. Jason's dad is, uh, or was a state trooper. He helped provide security for the school. And uh, obviously he had a key to the building. So that meant Jason had uh, instant access to the gym just about any time that he wanted. I don't think without that key I won't be sitting right here, but you know, it was nice. I went in there three or four hours just going in, dribbling, doing ball handling drills. Never really even shoot the ball for three or four hours. I'd be in there all by myself and, you know, just working on my handle because I knew that's, I wanted to be a point guard and point guards had to handle the ball really well, especially in this league. So I had to do what I had to do. Jason's college career began at Marshall University under coach Billy Donovan, who we followed to the University of Florida. Jason excelled on the court but found trouble. After failing two tests for marijuana, he was dismissed from the university in his first season. Sometimes a person has to hit rock bottom before he really elevates and catapults into something special. And Jason hit rock bottom. I think probably for the first time in his life, he was at a crossroads where either I'm going to shape up, get my life in order, get my act together, or I'm going to be nobody. Well, at first, you know, when I, I, I failed the first, uh, second drug test, I got kicked off the team. And at first, I was thinking, what am I going to do now? But the very next day, I put it behind me. I had to apologize to Coach Donovan, my dad, and the people, other people that was close to me. When I explain my troubles with people, I kind of tell them, it's like a baseball player. You know, when he steps up to the plate, he's got three strikes. And I feel as if I've already had two. And if I swing and miss again, then my career's through. And I, I don't know what I'll do then. After leaving college, Jason worked out with members of the Orlando Magic, honing his skills and raising his stock. Nick Anderson of the Magic, you know, he called me. He was just right down in Orlando, and we had the same agent. And I went down and moved in with him and started working out with those guys. They really knew a lot more about the game than I did, but, you know, once I got going and it started working out and lifting weights and getting a little bit stronger, I started fitting in, I guess. The Sacramento Kings select Jason Williams from the University of Florida. For guidance, Jason now turns to teammate Chris Weber, a player who has also had his share of off-court problems. We knew we kind of, you know, had the same thing in common and, and we're kind of cool, but I think we approached each other slowly. Me, you know, being new in Sacramento, him being new in the NBA. In the beginning, he would come and ask me certain things, you know. What about this? Do guys usually go out or... You know, and I really, you know, would tell them what well, some guys do, but they, or some guys can handle it. And if I see them doing something, first of all, it's, that it throws up a flag with me. I'll tell them exactly what I did, what mistakes I made, and this is why I'm telling you, so you don't think I'm just preaching to you. His troubles and my troubles are kind of similar in the past, but, you know, he handled them his ways, and he got he put them behind him, and just like I did, you know, I, I, I paid the consequences and apologized to the people that I hurt. And, you know, I just got to move on. People need to probably start judging Jason Williams after what happened here at the University of Florida instead of what's happened when he was in high school, when he was in college. Let's start judging him right now because he's a person that hit rock bottom and has now certainly made, I think, some very, very important changes in his life. And just as you were watching this piece at home uh, just moments ago, we have video of Jason Williams in the visitor's locker room at the Delta Center awaiting this game five with the Utah Jazz and uh, watching our story about him. So Isaiah and Peter, uh, maybe you guys better watch what you say here. <laughs> but Billy Donovan had a great point there at the end of the piece. Yeah, it was an excellent point. You know, young kids make mistakes early in life and 
they learn from those mistakes. They turn those negative things into positive. And each team, when they look at these kids, they need to judge them by their own merit, not lump everybody in the same barrel. When you look at Chris Weber, Jason Williams, they made mistakes when they were young, and now they're recovering from it. The King surprised a lot of people when they drafted him seventh, Peter. Well, first of all, they loved his peripheral vision. Uh, did you notice the way he was able to watch the screen without looking at it? <laughs> <laughs> that was something else. You know, the, the King surprised everybody by taking this kid, especially myself. I talked to uh, Jeff Petrie that afternoon in the draft, and he told me, no, no, you got it wrong. We're not taking this kid. And uh, so I got back to him uh, earlier this week, and I, and I said to him, you know, why did you feel necessary to fool me and everybody else. He said the reason was the Lakers were trying to get above the Kings to get Jason Williams, so he didn't want to let on. He said the reason he didn't want to let on more than any, anything else is that two years before, the Lakers had uh, gone above him to get Kobe Bryant. Uh, the Kings had the 13th pick. Uh, the 14th pick, they went to the Hornets. They traded Vlade Divac to the Hornets to get Kobe Bryant. Now Vlade and Jason Williams <laughs> playing together. Interesting. Right, teaming up <laughs> against the Utah Jazz. And, uh, well, they need him to shoot well. And the two games in which they beat Utah, Jason shot almost 50%. The two games that they lost, he only hit one-fourth of his shots. When we return, we'll talk about the first half in Miami between the Heat and the Knicks. But first, a message from Prudential and a word from the NBA.